Each season, there's always lots of excitement for when the big iron shows up, but this year, for some reason, there's almost more excitement for when the snow scoots get here so we can all go out in the back 40 and rally, but that's for another show. Instead, on today's show, we're going to go for a first burn on one of Yamaha's 50th anniversary snowmobiles, and I've got the Polaris Dragon back in the shop. And I'm going to give you my top 10 cool finds at this year's Toronto International Snowmobile ATV and Power Sports Show. Then I head to ERX Motor Park where we discover grassroots racing and a learn to ride snowcross clinic designed for kids and taught by today's top pros. STD has been brought to you by Yamaha. Conquer snow with Yamaha. Ford F-Series, Canada's best-selling line of trucks for 52 years. Tough, smart, capable. Kimpex, fueled by fun. The Yamaha Sidewinder is the most powerful production snowmobile ever. Or, in the words of Yamaha... Well, that's not really the end of the story. The 2018 Yamaha Sidewinder is a little bit more involved to end it like that, so let's start with what's new for 2018. First off, it's Yamaha's 50th anniversary, and one of the ways they're celebrating the milestone is with special edition graphics packages on LE models like this RTX. There's a couple of other things too, but there's one thing that hasn't changed, and it's this bit right here, the turbo. And it's the turbo that turns this machine into a beast. Yamaha claims 180 horsepower, but that's at 10,000 feet. Here at sea level, it's easy to add another 20 ponies, pushing that number up even higher. And when you grab a punch of throttle with this sled, you better be ready for it. This sled redefines the connection between here and here. The power that this thing has will get you going at a pace down the trail that you've never been to before. And the speed at which this thing can get you there is simply astounding. Not that there's anything wrong with that, it's awesome, but if you choose to go ludicrous on this machine, you'd better know what's going on around you. Now, more than one person has been caught out by the Sidewinder, and sometimes it starts with, hey, I wanna try that sled, let me go for a burn across the lake or the field. Now, this segment, it's called First Burn, and let me tell you, the first ride on this machine can definitely burn you. Trust me, I know, it almost put me in the rhubarb. The power of the Sidewinder is something that just doesn't stop. It pulls and pulls and pulls some more hard. But it's actually pretty smooth doing it, which is one of the reasons why this sled can get you into trouble. You just don't realize how fast you're going or how quickly you got there. So entering a corner with all this going on can make things spicy in a hurry. Ever hear the saying he ran out of talent? Well, this sled is gonna test your talent, which is a good thing. Now, up to this point, I'm painting a picture that might have you thinking this sled is a little dangerous, but it really isn't. You just have to pay attention, which is something you've got to do on any hyper sled in the market anyways. I'm just trying to impress upon you that this sled is a bit more hyper than some of the others. Now that we have that out of the way, the Sidewinder is actually a pretty decent trail sled, especially when you're not traveling at speeds approaching plaid. At a normal pace, the Sidewinder, well, it's as docile as any other GT sled in the market, and that's because its power plant is both predictable and linear at part throttle, and the SRV chassis, well, it responds well to body English. Last season, the Sidewinder became one of the go-to sleds of the STV and OSM fleets for long-haul rides. It's quiet, the heated seat helps keep you warm, and the engine pumps enough heat out of the bodywork to be felt as well. It was even one of the best sleds on fuel at moderate boost levels anyways. But it is a big sled, and all of our riders felt it was one you had to pace yourself on. 
it does demand some effort to ride spiritedly. So on those long days, it's best to back off a bit in the tight stuff. Now, even if you do fall behind, don't worry, you're gonna catch up on the next straight bit. The 2018 also sees an improvement with the skis and a new keel design. Now this helps with the bite in the corners. The machine's still heavy, mind you, but this new ski really does help this thing corner better than it used to. Another big part of making this particular 50th anniversary sled as good as it is, is the Fox QX3 shocks on the front and rear suspensions. I love these things for their simplicity. They have three positions that as a rider you can actually feel in the seat of your pants, and they can be set quickly with gloves on. The only complicating factor is the adjustable rebound that's located on the bottom of the ski shocks and the rear arm shock of the skid. Now a little time spent here understanding how rebound will affect ride and shock packing plus setting your ride height will help fine tune these QX3s perfectly. But your go-to adjustment will still be the top three position clicker. At the end of the day, this is not a sled for everyone. This is an expert only ride, but in the hands of an experienced rider, it is a capable sled in just about every way. It can be trail ridden on local systems, toured long haul at destinations, and it's still down to race across any lake that you might come across. The 2018 Yamaha RTX LE is one of those sleds that people just notice. This thing really is something special. Kind of reminds me of the old days of the triple triples like the Thundercats and the Mach 1s, SRXs and Storms. You knew when you saw those sleds on the trail or on the lake, you were looking at the big dogs. I wonder if those days are coming back. You know, the Toronto International Snowmobile ATV and Power Sports Show is the largest indoor snowmobile show in the world. Every year, tens of thousands of riders come to the Toronto International Centre to check out what's new for the coming season. And after three days of sleds, quads, racing, freestyle shows, and a lot of bull sessions, here's my top 10 from this year's show. Number 10, the Toronto Maple Leaf Centennial Edition F-150. If you're like most snowmobilers, you're going to need a tow vehicle, unless you live in the Goldilocks zone, where the snow is always deep. At this year's show, we came across the ultimate tow vehicle for hockey fans living in Ontario. The crew from Ford put together this limited build Maple Leaf Edition F-150, and it's exclusive to Toronto area Ford dealerships. Mind you, only 400 were built, so you better act fast before this one slips through the five hole. Number nine, the CF Moto Z Force 1000. Okay, so it's not a sled, but the Toronto show is so much more than just a snowmobile show. And the arrival of a full cube 1000 Z Force from CF Moto is a pretty big deal. Back at the office, our sister publication ATV World has had good things to say about CF Moto buggies. And now with 80 ponies at the accelerator, it should only get better. Number eight, the Snow Dog. You've likely seen videos of the Snow Dog on YouTube recently, but while we have yet to ride one, we are intrigued to say the least. Designed for utility tasks, the Snow Dog can tow more than 1,000 pounds, weighs only about 300 pounds, and breaks down to fit in the back of your SUV or pickup. Who's ready to go ice fishing? Number seven, the Argo XTV water tank. Water and an Argo XTV go hand in hand. That's because the vehicle is amphibious by design. But it's not always easy to demonstrate this capability unless you have a pond or a lake nearby. But that didn't stop the Argo crew from coming up with Plan B at the Toronto show. The solution, an Argo-sized dunk tank. Number six, the Pogo lift. Need to work on your buggy, but you're tired of bending over or crawling around on your knees? Then get yourself a Pogo lift. Heavy duty construction and able to lift up to 800 pounds, seven feet in the air. They're not only great for working on sleds or ATVs, but they're also offer an ideal solution when shop space is at a premium. We plan to showcase one of these lifts in an upcoming show, so watch for it. Number five, Elka Suspension Snowmobile Shocks. Snowmobile suspensions have come a long way since the days of the leaf spring, and with it, so too has shock technology. They now offer snowmobile designed shocks in five levels of performance, from the base stage one to the incredibly adjustable stage five. Number four, the second generation CKX Titan helmet. Boom. Last winter, CKX introduced the Titan and frankly, I was blown away. 
Sure, I've tried other modular helmets in the past, but the Titan exceeded my expectations and it became my go-to lid for the rest of the winter. Now for 2018, the Titan is back with some key improvements with a better sealing muzzle, improved airflow, and the addition of an electric goggle option. I already know what helmet I'm going with this winter. Number three, the Camso Snowbike. You're likely already familiar with the Camso name. After all, they are the go-to source for practically all snowmobile tracks. But now, the Road Free Company has been making major inroads in the snowbike market. For starters, they acquired competitive kit maker Yeti this past fall, and then they partnered with Yamaha to offer their Camso conversion kit as a direct factory Yamaha accessory. Looks like the single stage craze is here to stay. Number two, Edge Performance Center Polaris Ride Club. Want to ride the latest model snowmobiles from Polaris this winter, but can't justify purchasing a new sled? The new Ride Club program implemented by Edge Performance is perhaps the perfect solution. In essence, it's a lease program for snowmobiles. Your membership allows you to ride a new snowmobile when you want, where you want, with a premium service experience, without the cost of ownership. Sounds too good to be true? Learn more at polaris.com slash ride club. And number one, the Sherp. This vehicle is so bad to the bone awesome, it's called simply Sherp. According to the Sherp brochure, this all-terrain beast is built for courageous men. And given its menacing stature and ridiculous capabilities, we couldn't agree more. Manufactured in Russia, the Sherp looks one part moon buggy, one part G.I. Joe, and one part transformer. It goes through, up, over, and on top of water, ice, swamps, rocks, steep grades, and any other type of crazy train you could think of. It's fully enclosed, and the Sherp can carry up to 1,000 kilograms and sleeps four with available bunks. Sounds like a sleepover. On Shop Hustle this week, I've got a shocking subject for you because the shocks on this buggy, the Polaris Dragon used snowmobile that we have, need to be rebuilt. But first, we gotta get them off. I hope you don't mind, but I came preloaded with a few puns. Hopefully we'll be able to compress everything into one TV segment. Stay tuned, we're about to spring into action. I hope you don't mind, because I really don't want to dampen your experience. I know it's a lot to absorb, but this is a pretty easy job. I know the puns are bad, but I'm sure you're gonna rebound from them. I win. Don't worry, we're bumping up against the end here. You say that like it's a, oh, ram mounts, look at that. Oh, hang on a sec, we're finishing up here. Get out of the way. Got like one more pun to do. Things are going right down the monotubes now. Shocks don't live forever. Time and distance are constantly working against them. But on sleds like our Dragon, at least they're rebuildable. So we've come here to see John at Accelerated Technologies because I'm pretty sure these shocks are shot. Accelerated Technologies is probably 15, 20 years old now and it was born on the Canadian road racing scene where we were developing, testing and riding high performance super bikes, uh, GP bikes, road race bikes, production bikes. And it was very cyclical, the business cycle, in terms of the Canadian seasons. We were crazy busy from April to September, and then it would just die off. And it gave me time to do some of my own personal stuff, which was enjoy ATVing and snowmobiling. And we started to, to improve the suspension systems on those vehicles. And, and then we took that to the public. And, and the response has been just crazy. It's been phenomenal. We, uh, Elka suspension is 
has joined us. We kind of brought them into the field of snowmobile racing and snowmobile riding, and now they're 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 doing huge business in in the snowmobile industry, and and we're kind of at the forefront of that. What we learned from pavement racing, you know, we things like swing arm angle and drive grip on a motorcycle, weight transfer, acceleration, deceleration, uh, how the tires load up. Um, when you change the ride height in the back of a motorcycle and, and you raise the back of the motorcycle and the forks will steepen, we call that the, the rake and the trail relationship, directly apply to snowmobiles. And a lot of the people in the snowmobile industry didn't even realize that themselves. And it's been a fun journey that way. Almost every shock nowadays is rebuildable. There's some steel body shocks, black in color, no nitrogen fitting on the top of the shock. Those are not rebuildable, but they are the minority. Most of the aluminum body shocks are rebuildable, and boy, do they need it. Uh, we hate to tell people that these things are just like your engine. They break in and start generating contamination the first probably three tanks of gas and they would love to have an oil change after 500 kilometers. You know, again, we feel guilty and we telling people that, but, but the, the poor shock has a small, small amount of oil in it, and that piston is going up and down in the bore, honing itself the clearance that it wants. It's knocking all the high spots from machining off, all that sediment and contamination goes down and sits around the shock shaft and it start, the shock now starts to get sticky. Uh, we may or may not perceive it. Suspension degrades every time we ride our snowmobile by 1% or 2%, so you don't notice it. It's not a big, it's not like blowing a drive belt. You know when you blow a drive belt, you come to a stop. When the suspension starts to slowly degrade, we don't notice it right away. But then we get in there, we get all that contamination out uh, we clean the seal head, sometimes we'll change the seal. Often we don't need any parts. We're just getting out the dirt, grime, grit, and then we're putting in a good synthetic oil. The ride is often better than it is wh when it was new, and we've also hit that shock at a point in its degradation, so the, the ride quality improvement is sometimes stunning. So uh, for safety, it's a good thing to do. Um, and uh, ride enjoyment, it's a good thing to do. And often we take the opportunity to just give them a little bit of education while they're getting their shock serviced. We tell them the trick, put a little tie wrap, put a zip tie on the shock shaft, cut it off, and now you've got some feedback. How much travel am I using when I'm going down the trail? Am I hitting the bumper constantly? I've run into a situation where I've had pro professional racers come and tell me that a shock is way way too stiff. I, it's beating me up. And I look at it and the tie wrap I snuck on it, it's stuffed into the bottom of the shock. It's into the bump rubber. And I stiffen the shock up. Maybe I add some preload. I add some compression damping. They'll go out, come back in and say, that's way better. And I stiffen the shock up. I firmed it up, but now it's not hitting the bump rubber every, every corner, every, every issue. We're, we're now we're not using all the travel. In it and a one cent zip tie has given us that information. So things like that, we love to take the opportunity to educate and provide good service. Hey kids, it's Pat Bourgeois, Snowmobiler Television, and today we are at ERX Motor Park in Elk River for the Learn to Ride Clinic. We're gonna go hang out with Andrew Carlson, Kyle Polina, a bunch of the other pros. They're gonna teach kids and old guys like me how to go fast. Who doesn't like to go fast? Come on, let's go. ERX Motor Park has become known as one of the premier power sports racing venues in the Midwest. While they offer all kinds of racing throughout the year, from National Off-Road Trucks to the Red Bull Snow Boundaries event, it's the track's reputation of offering a relaxed and friendly racing environment that has made it so successful. Their grassroots racing series offers classes for every caliber of rider and for nearly every kind of sled, old or new. It's affordable, family fun that has become part of the snowmobiling community. But they are doing more than just offering a place for everyday Joes and up and coming riders to practice and race. They're also helping kids become better racers and build better character with their annual Learn to Ride Clinic. 
Designed for kids who race 120s, 200s, and full-size sleds, it helps them to develop better skills and better sportsmanship. What's more, many of today's top pro riders in the world, including Cody Cam, Tucker Hibbert, and Levi Lavalle, to name just a few, volunteer their time and lend their insight as learn to ride coaches, giving back to the sport in hopes that one day, these kids will be the next generation of pro riders. I like coming out here and just trying to help the kids. Like it's, it's really fun when, you know, you, you try to give them some advice and they take it in and like you could physically see them get faster on the track. It's just like, sweet, like that was, that was awesome, you know? And uh, so that's, I don't know, it just, it feels pretty cool to, uh, to try to help them, you know, along their way up to the top and hopefully, uh, hopefully become professionals someday and be racing with them, you know? Cause I got, I got a lot of help I know uh, on my way up to the top and still do, I mean, from Levi and countless others. And, uh, you know, it, it is, you're out there on your own, but it's far from an individual sport. I mean, there's many, many people that play a role, you know, on getting you to where, uh, where you want to go. Honestly, there couldn't be a better place to have this event, you know, it, it's here because we want to grow the sport. That's why ERX is what it is. It's grassroots, it's putting putting things together that you know we wish we had when I started racing and you know giving these kids a non-threatening environment to come out and ride and you don't have to be nationally sponsored and you know it's 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 backyard kind of come out and just run it, you know. If you're on a trail sled, who cares? It's a non-judgmental environment. You can come. We don't we don't care if you're not the fastest kid, but as long as you're trying and you want to do it, that's why that's why it's here. So you know, it's awesome. Well, that's it, man. Learn to ride clinic ERX. It's time to go grab a cold one. I'm out. Hey, thanks for watching. Until next week, keep the rubber side down. Uh-oh, that really is gone.